Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Happy evening everyone. So in this video, I'm going to help you in fixing uh, an issue with your Burp Suite application, alright? And if you're trying to use it from your Kali Linux virtual machine, alright? Apologies if my voice is uh, a little muffled. I'm experiencing some technical glitch with my audio here. So I'll try to probably uh, maximize my volume to a bit where I can sound uh, properly. So before we jump into the video, I'd just like to add, uh, I mean a brief uh, description about uh, what Burp Suite is about. So it is basically a, a tool, a, a graphical tool, or I, I can also call it a framework that is used for uh, performing security testing of web applications. All right. Also, when I say it, is, it has a framework, is because it consists of various tools, guys, Okay, that work seamlessly together to support the entire uh, testing process or uh, penetration testing process, like from initial mapping and analysis of application uh, of an application's attack surface, like, also uh, through to finding and exploiting security vulnerabilities within a particular web application. All right. So this is the brief about uh, what a Burp Suite application is about. Okay, let's quickly jump into the uh, exact context of this video. Okay, let me log on to my uh, Kali Linux virtual machine over here. All right. So uh, what happened is a few of my subscribers uh, were asking me questions like they were experiencing some issue within the Burp Suite. So let me quickly show you what uh, they were talking about. So let me launch my root terminal and just type Burp Suite over here. Right and uh, and this happens only if you run the Burp Suite on your uh, Kali Linux virtual machine, then your Windows uh, machine. All right and uh, so you can just ignore this error, just say okay to, it, to this pop up, and as soon as you do that, your uh, uh, Burp Suite community edition gets opened up, and you all you need to do is select temporary project and hit next, and then just uh, use the Burp defaults. All right and just say start Burp. All right and as soon as you do that, guys, uh, what happens is. So Burp is basically acting like a proxy server, guys. Okay, it tries to intercept the web uh, web traffic and read the web traffic, and uh, then you just inspect the traffic for any sort of uh, vulnerabilities in it or any sort of uh, uh, any sort of like it uh, content filtering. Okay, it acts like a content filtering too. Okay, so uh, if, you, if I just go to proxy, right under this intercept tab, when we do intercept on, okay, what it does is it intercepts your browser's traffic. Okay. And that this only happens when you're you have already set up the proxy settings within your external browser guys which is over here you have to specify this loopback interface address along with the port number which is 8080 which is default and you have to import and you have to import your uh, burp suite ca certificate onto your browser okay and then only the external browser's traffic will be intercepted by the burp suite however when it comes to your embedded browser within your burp suite okay that does not uh, require you to do all these configuration things the proxy configuration things because all those proxy configurations gets enabled by default when I mean, if you're going to use your uh, embedded browser over here which is your open browser if you just click on this you will get this error guys your os does not support burps browser running with it sandbox enabled this is what i'm going to help you in fixing it so it's very simple guys you just have to uh, go to settings right by just clicking on burp and then just clicking on settings okay and then here you have an option called burps browser you just have to click on that and just check this box run burps browser without a sandbox okay and then you just have to close this and as soon as you do that if you click on open browser your embedded browser is going to get up um, it's going to get opened up this is what the uh, embedded browser looks like this is a chromium based browser okay which is very similar to your chrome browser and that's it guys so this is how you fix it and uh, if you found this really helpful please hit the upload button guys and do not forget to subscribe my channel for more useful technical content like this with regards to cyber security thank you we'll meet in the next video see you tata hey guys welcome back to my channel happy saturday everyone watching this video so in this video i am going to show you how to install burp suites external components or otherwise called as extenders or extensions all right or add-ons just like you do uh, it within your browser all right so i'm just going to give you a small brief about what these extenders are or extensions are so burp suite supports these external components that can be integrated into the form of tools okay which are already there like intruder or, or uh, repeater um, scanner etc okay just like those tools there are some add-on tools that could be integrated in the form of uh, this extensions facility all right these external components or extensions are called as b apps all right these work just like your browser extensions so these can be viewed modified installed or even uninstalled in the extender window or, or in the within the extender tab all right and some of them are supported only um, on your pro version that is the paid version of your uh, burp suite application as well as uh, some features are also supported on your community edition all right so let's quickly begin guys i'm just going to show you how to install it in the very first place um so i'm just going to quickly launch my root terminal uh, within my kali linux all right and here i'm just going to type burp suite 
hit it enter and this is going to launch my burp suites community edition i'm just going to say temporary project start burp all right that's going to launch my burp suite application all right and let's say um let's say we are doing or uh, running some tests on a specific target which is uh, included in our scope material all right and then uh, the target obviously has a web application firewall installed in it and we are trying to bypass it. So basically this requires the bypass WAF extension over here that needs to be integrated using this extension tab over here. All right. And here we will see or we will find the B app store. Okay. Just like your Google's play store right here. What you need to do is just search for bypass WAF extension. All right. And if you want to install it, I'm just going to say reinstall in my case over here. Okay, that's going to quickly uninstall and reinstall the extension. All right. And this is how you do it, guys. And I can just uh, install further more uh, extensions over here. And for certain extensions, like I said before, it requires Bob Suite's professional edition. That is the paid version of your uh, Bob Suite software. Okay, which is which is going to uh, list over here itself. Okay, here it says purchase Bob Suite professional. All right. So which means this is not going to be supported on your community edition of your Bob Suite. So let me just uh, quickly install another extension. Right. Let's say. I'm going to install this um, JSON decoder over here. All right. I'm just going to click on download JSON. All right. I think it's not directly going to install it. Hence, I will try another one. Uh, yeah. So JSWS parser. I'm just going to install this particular extension by clicking on install. All right. As soon as I do that, as you can see, you guys, there is that extension uh, getting installed as a tool or as in a tab. All right. So that's it guys and uh, somehow it's not functioning as expected right maybe i'll try to reinstall it and see if it does give anything okay so that's not giving me anything let me try maybe this one and see if it gives me something yeah there you go guys i tried installing the nessus loader and this has successfully installed it and i'm able to do uh, stuffs from this tab over here or from this extension that I have integrated within my uh, Framework of tools. Okay, so this particular tab is going to now act as a tool Okay, just like the other default tools like comparer decoder sequencer repeater, etc So that's how you do it guys and if you found this video helpful Please hit the up button and do not forget to subscribe my channel for more useful technical content like this with regards to cyber security Thank you. We'll meet in the next video. Tada. Hey guys. Welcome back to my channel. Happy evening everyone watching this video. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to run a quick health check for your burps browser as in your embedded browser. All right. So let's say for example, if you're experiencing any issues with your embedded burps browser, you can use this health check uh, feature within your burp suites application. Okay. To help you diagnose the problem with your burps uh, browser. All right. And you can access this tool from burps help menu. All right. And this particular health check feature runs a series of tests against your um, burps browser. Uh, and ensure if it is working correctly or not and also it provides you the feedback on any issues that arise right so that's what i'm going to quickly show you how to do it uh, so let me uh, so i've already launched my root terminal here i'm just going to type burp suite and i'm just going to hit enter and that's going to start up my burp suite community edition all right and i'm just going to load a temporary project and uh, use the burp defaults and say start burp Right, as soon as I do that guys, so all I will be doing is I'm just going to click on help option over here and here you will see the option health check for burps browser. As soon as you hit that, the scan will uh, begin and then it will run a series of checks and ensure all is fine. All right. And I think there was an issue with this headless browser thing, browser check, but however, it has automatically addressed it. All right. And then, uh, so that's all the checks done guys and it seems that it has successfully completed all the tests and the browser is running fine okay so if you see here there was there was one warning initially raised however i think it has addressed itself right and then that has entered the uh, requirement of the health check and all seems to be okay all right and uh, so that's how you do it guys and if you found this video helpful please hit the support button and do not forget to subscribe my channel for more technical content like this thank you we'll meet in the next video see you tada Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So in this video, I will explain what exactly a brute force attack is about. And also we will learn on how attackers uh, crack passwords of uh, both web and on-prem applications. Okay. Using this brute force attack technique. All right. 
or uh, brute force attack basically so the the basics of how a brute force attack uh, operates are going to be explained in this video as well as uh, we will also take a step by step approach on how to prevent all these brute force attacks okay also we also read about the harmful app implications of a brute force attack and also we will learn some ways how we can protect our credentials against such attacks okay and also i have demoed exactly how an attacker tries to uh, steal username and password using this brute force attack mechanism all right so let's quickly begin into the exact demonstration of the video guys and this video is for your educational purposes only and this video will ensure that the knowledge that i have spread in this video will help you gain more insight about uh, cyber defense as well as uh, penetration testing using burp suites application as well as it will uh, help you if you're uh, aspiring into a career um involving or testing your cyber security skills please do watch the entire video and do uh, i mean do hit a, a like button for this video as well as uh, do not forget to subscribe my channel for more useful content like this so let's quickly jump into the video guys thank you hey guys welcome back to my channel happy sunday everyone so this video i'm going to talk about burps into the functionality okay so before we jump into the exact demonstration part i will just give you a brief explanation about what exactly this tool is about so basically uh, this tool is used for automating customized attacks against web applications that could be vulnerable and that could be non vulnerable basically this tool is used uh, in pen testing of uh, web applications okay uh, in cyber security domain or cyber security field all right and also it enables you to configure attacks that send uh, same http request over and over again okay inserting different payloads into predefined positions every time all right and uh, so let's quickly begin guys so in order to do this uh, live i would use a web application or website that is uh, intentionally or what i can say i can say it has ethically benign uh, susceptible application all right susceptible web application okay that is uh, particularly used for learning all these stuffs okay within burp suite so let's quickly begin guys i've already launched my kali linux terminal okay and what i'm going to do is this is the application that i was talking about testphp.vulnweb.com forward slash login.php this is um, an intentionally ethically uh, benign susceptible web application okay that is uh, susceptible to a lot of web related vulnerabilities all right website related web vulnerabilities i can say like uh, brute force vulnerabilities in the form of no lockout account sorry no account lockout policy vulnerability all right and uh, that is uh, that is susceptible against all these brute force attacks okay and let's quickly begin guys what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to quickly launch a new instance of burp suite right i'm just going to quickly clear and relaunch the burp suite okay the community edition i will just delete the previous projects that i have been working on and i'll use the burp defaults right and i will quickly launch the uh, burp suites community edition uh, application right and uh, i'm going to quickly go to proxies tab and just turn the intercept on before that i will just uh, open the browser embed browser so i think it needs me to enable the embed browser first All right and i'm just going to quickly close it and i'm just going to open the default browser there is the embedded browser which is chromium based browser very similar to google chrome and here what i'm going to do is i'm just going to quickly launch that application once again for you All right and this is the okay let's go to the login page and i'm just going to simply carry out a brute force mock brute force uh, mock brute force attack against this web website or web application basically okay i'm just going to input a wrong password here i will just give admin so this has a default uh, username and password which is test and test that is globally used it's globally same for everyone even if you log in it's going to log in as test and test you can't change the password as well okay and i'm just quick i will quickly log in and show you how it looks like post entering the username and password this is how it looks like you can do the all the all kinds of modification here all right and i'm just going to quickly log out and uh, quickly get, go back to the login page and i'm just going to put the username as test and just give the password as admin just for uh, sake of the demonstration purpose and i'm quickly going to intercept the traffic from uh, burp suite okay i'm just quickly just going to quickly log in and here you go the request has uh, got captured both the get and uh, post request okay and here what i'm going to do now is in order to launch a mock brute force attack against this particular uh, web application which is benign and i'm just going to quickly send this request to intruder tab all right within the intruder tab what i'm going to do now is i'm going to target two uh, positions okay two payload positions basically under this payload positions 
automatically your username and password gets highlighted which means these are parameters that you can target okay or basically you are going to carry out the attack okay using these parameters or i mean targeting these parameters okay which is nothing but username and password okay because obviously if we want to carry out a brute force attack the obvious two parameters get involved is the username and password okay and the positions is nothing but defining a dollar symbol before and after the parameter okay so as you can see it's by default it gets selected because it it is predefined okay this is a predefined position which is which already gets enabled if you send it to the into the tab uh, and then what you have to do is you need to specify a payload okay uh, i will select a simple list that is that contain uh, that contains list of uh, uh, passwords that could could be possible passwords i will say okay uh, let me show you that payload list for you just for the just for your info or just for your fii this is the password guys the first two passwords are generic ones okay which which are again could be possible passwords and the last one over here is the exact password okay why am i doing this guys basically uh, what happens is when it comes to no account lockout policy uh, definement for example most of the uh, web applications right web applications or on premise applications have uh, this uh, no account policy uh, i mean no account lockout policy mechanism or policy defined on the web applications which means that typically uh, accounts will get locked out after three to five unsuccessful uh, unsuccessful login attempts and can only be unlocked after a predefined uh, determined period of time via a self service unlock mechanism or uh, through an intervention by an administrator okay and also this account lockout mechanisms require a balance between uh, protecting uh, the application accounts from unauthorized access as well as uh, protecting users from being denied uh, their authorized accesses all right so that's the whole point of doing this guys and also what happens is like i said uh, uh, accounts usually get logged out after 3 to 5 unsuccessful, uh, unsuccessful login attempts guys so here we have defined at least uh, 15 password 15 to 16 passwords um, so obviously until the 16 attempts the login attempt is going to fail as a result if it successfully if the intruder uh, functionality is successfully able to carry out the brute force attack meaning the 17th attempt it will where it will uh, try to enter the username test and password test it will obviously be able to log in and give us the uh, 200 okay status code meaning uh, if there was an uh, no i mean lockout policy defined during the fifth attempt right typically uh, five login attempts uh, five unsuccessful login attempts the account gets locked out right if it is able to uh, penetrate after the fifth attempt obviously we can come to a conclusion that there is no uh, account lockout policy mechanism defined for that particular web application so this is how you do the security testing guys as a result this payload is uh, defined to ensure that uh, we come to know or we find uh, there is no account lockout policy mechanism uh, defined within the web application all right so let's quickly begin the attack guys okay and here what i need to do is i need to simply load this text file guys okay what i'm going to do is select a load and uh, select payload list and uh, just for uh, your fii again so the payload list that i've made consists of majority of blockbuster uh, movies that i am fan of and hence i have uh, just copy pasted all those movie names in my payload list all right and uh, i'm just quickly going to uh, going to select the payloads uh, payload list that i have defined okay and here what i'm going to do is i'm just going to select um, sniper basically what happens is uh, if you select the battering ram there are four types of attacks here sniper battering ram pitchfork cluster bomb so i'm just going to select battering ram for now because it fits my requirement here because what it uh, what this battering ram attack does is it uses a single uh, set of payloads okay and it it iterates through the pay payloads and places the same payload into all of the defined payload positions at once meaning we have two positions here okay and we need to use the uh, same set of payload against both these positions hence battering ram is the uh, appropriate type of attack intruder attack that we can run just now okay and which suits my requirement or which fits my requir uh, requirement currently okay and i'm quickly going to begin the attack by selecting start attack over here okay so as soon as i do that guys as you can see here the brute forcing has begun and you can see here all these attempts have been unsuccessful up until 16th 
password 16th username and password and 17th username and password um brute forcing successfully completed and the and we have recorded we have also received a 200 okay response meaning the login was successful okay you can see here the cookie has the login uh, username and password as test and test and if you go to the rendering it will show the exact response what has happened after uh, the login was successful okay using the test and test uh, using the test username and test uh, username uh, sorry test password okay and if you see the other ones other requests that ha that are logged you will see the message clearly says you must log in which means the login attempt failed okay and the last one which had my payload i mean which my payload had was the exact username and password which is nothing but test and test okay and using that particular uh, credentials uh, the brute forcing was successful okay so meaning this website is susceptible to no account lockout policy vulnerability or the uh, it is susceptible to brute force attack vulnerabilities all right hence what it does is it gives you an idea to remediate this vulnerability okay like we carried out an attack on uh, uh, a benign web application okay or uh, intentionally susceptible web application and this is just for our learning purpose guys okay and we have successfully learned how the intruder tab, tab functionality works to run mock attacks against web application and also this helps organizations improve this their security posture by running penetration testing uh, attacks against their in-house web applications and ensuring that their web applications has the right uh, account policy uh, account lockout policies defined for their uh, user accounts for their login accounts as a result what happens is they successfully preventing their in-house web applications against these brute force attack vulnerabilities against coming against coming from attackers basically all right and if you found this video helpful please hit the support button guys and do not forget to subscribe my channel and share this knowledge to everyone and stay cyber uh, aware all right and uh, so we'll meet in the next video guys with more useful technical content like this with regards to cyber security. Thank you. Have a wonderful day ahead. Tata. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Happy Sunday everyone. So in this video we're going to see how to use uh, Bob Suite's repeated app. And um, also uh, I would like everyone to understand what exactly this uh, repeated app does and uh, about its capabilities. Right. So in the last video uh, with regards to the burp suites functionality i had explained what intruder tab exactly is and how it works okay in uh, pen testing okay I gave uh, a live example of how to uh, inject payloads and uh, uh, run mock attacks so in this video i'm not going to go on to um, very advanced stuffs here i'm just going to explain uh, burp suites repeater tab in a very basic sense okay so you get an idea about how to use the repeater tab uh, efficiently so let's quickly get started guys okay so just i will just give a small uh, brief about what exactly this tab is okay so basically uh, in, amongst all of the tools that is built into burp suites uh, application there is one tool called repeater okay repeater is designed to take requests that you have made and to be able to edit and replay them at will okay it is a very useful tool guys for tweaking and refining payloads uh, designed to um, exploit cross uh, site scripting or uh, even um, sqli as in uh, sql injection vulnerabilities okay um, and also like firstly what you need to do is i've just launched my Kali Linux terminal i'm just going to uh, quickly open the root terminal and launch burp suite in front of you right this is the community edition guys not the uh, Pro version. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, select defaults and start up a project, fresh project. And I'm going to show you using the embedded browser within uh, Burp Suite's uh, application that comes uh, part of. I'm just going to quickly go to settings and enable Burp's browser. Okay, and I have enabled the Burp's uh, inbuilt browser. All I'm going to do is go to prox uh, proxy tab and just open uh, the embedded browser first. I'm just going to quickly go to this page, uh, test php.wildweb.com and uh, forward slash login.php. Um, the login page basically all right and all we need to do here is just send a request uh, to the repeater tab okay all you need to do is for example let's say i'm just going to type test and then um, type in the password wrongly all right i have typed as admin wherein the actual password is test all right i'm just going to quickly uh, intercept the traffic and uh, firstly get the traffic here in the pro under the proxy page and then i will send the request over to the repeater tab okay and then what i'm just do is i'll just uh, turn the intercept on and just load the page by clicking on login and here the web page has been intercepted under the proxy tab and as soon as i do that what i will do is i'll just send this request by clicking right clicking on the page and just selecting send to repeater i can do that using the uh, key combination control plus r as well okay 
and here there is that request that has come on the left side and to, to view the response i just have to click send and the response will get showed up on the right side all right here uh, there is a there are four views to it one is a pretty view one is a raw view one is a hex a decimal view there is a rendering as well which shows the exact web page how it looks like how the request looks like or the, uh, how the request would look on the browser okay so let me quickly send guys this page or the risk uh, request from the web uh, web server is going to end up uh, giving us a 302 error code let's see yeah, there you go guys 302 generally means um, logon has failed so it clearly says you must log in because we have entered the wrong uh, uname and password all right and if you see the rendering again the web page is going to give you this kind of error all right and now with this repeater tab i can actually modify the re uh, request uh, received over and over again and replay it as many times as, as possible so this is going to come very handy okay if you are um, um, i mean if, if you're trying to exploit a uh, cross-site scripting or sqli vulnerabilities right uh, if you are a learning penetration tester or if you are uh, into um, if you are into penetration testing within cyber security okay within cyber security domain so uh, again like it's not just like this guys i can send as many requests uh, as as i can to the same repeater tab okay from the same page or the from the same web page for example let's say if i want to send it again i can do the same thing i will just uh, click on send to repeater another request comes in here so you can see there is there are two requests and again i can go to the proxy tab and right click and send to repeater over and again and again there will be three requests generated for the same page and i can do as many tweaks as possible and see the web server's response on the right side okay for example let's say the first request had me putting in the wrong password and uh, we getting uh, http 302 status code and the second page let's see if we enter the right password are we getting the exact okay response yeah we we do receive this 200 okay now all right which means the web rendering right so I think there is something wrong here. There you go, guys. I had to resend it, and uh, the status code has changed to 200 OK now. And the web rendering, the web page rendering, looks like this. Very similar to what we would have seen in the browser, right? So let's go to browser and see. I would not be able to send unless I forward this request. Okay, I will show you later. And here is how we keep repeating the request using the repeater tab. To just uh, like you can do anything here. You can. Uh, all, I mean, modify uh, parameters here and see if the website is vulnerable to uh, web uh, web tampering or uh, data tampering vulnerabilities. Okay, you can use this repeater tab, which will come in very handy if you're trying to exploit uh, a known vulnerability in the form of uh, web tampering uh, vulnerability or data tampering vulnerability on websites, and uh, uh, subsequently fixing it. Okay, or reporting to the website owner to have them fix this uh, that particular vulnerability. So this repeater tab is going to come in very efficiently for you. All right, and uh, so that, that's how guys and let's see if we can tweak this any further here within this so this is this test php.vulnweb is a very uh, is an intentionally susceptible website and it's a benign website it's totally harmless okay you can use this website for learning purposes all right and you can get as much as knowledge you can from this uh, from visiting this website and uh, making use of it all right and uh, using the repeater tabs uh, capabilities you can learn more and more so this is a very basic thing that i've showed you here okay modifying uh, requests tweaking them according to your will or requirement and then looking in for the response all right on the right side which is the right side all right and so this is how you do, do it guys and if you found this video helpful please hit the upvote button and do not forget to subscribe my channel guys and i'm just going to i'm not going to make any advanced stuff on uh, any of these uh, utilities guys unless like i have hit a very good audience and audience are in turn uh, requesting me to make some sort, some kind of content for them all right so hence why i am uh, left to making very basic stuffs about uh, cyber security and uh, obviously uh, there is a uh, uh, YouTube's stringent monitoring policies as well. All right, and uh, and if you found this video helpful, please hit the upvote uh, button, guys, and don't forget to subscribe my channel for more useful content like this with regards to cyber security. Thank you. Uh, wish you a great day ahead, and uh, thanks for watching. Thank hey guys, welcome to my channel. Happy Saturday, everyone. So this video will talk about um, what exactly is a local file inclusion vulnerability when it comes to web application. Okay, so basically. Uh, what is a local file inclusion vulnerability you may ask me so basically this is a web vulnerability caused by mistakes um, made by a programmer of a particular website or web application and also if a uh, vulnerability in the form of lfi exists in a website or a web application uh, basically an attacker can include malicious files okay that could be later run by this website or web application and uh, giving an attacker um, access to sensitive information like um, in case of a uh, apache web server uh, normally uh, um, there is a directory called uh, there is a there is a directory that is called as a uh, web document root directory okay that is basically uh, uh, let me show you on the on my calendar next what i'm talking about 
there are two types of directories one is the root directory which is uh, familiar when it comes to linux based operating systems and when it comes to uh, hosting web application on a web server like um, in case of apache web server generally the uh, the web applications uh, files right like uh, maybe the configuration files or uh, some html files in the form of index.html all resides within the uh, within this uh, web document root directory all right so basically this is we see here we are currently in root okay this is not in case of uh, apache web server hosting a web application basically what we need to do is we need to get inside this path var and then www and then if we go inside here you will see this html uh, directory so basically we have to get inside the html so if we do a ls basically you can see here index.html file uh, which is the uh, home page of your uh, of any website or web application and then here there could be a lot of other uh, important files or sensitive files uh, that will be uh, part of the uh, web applications uh, suite all right so here uh, let's say uh, if an attacker has uh, d dvw uh, there is a there is another folder that he has created in the form of dvwa and within that he has uh, added a lot of uh, important files related to the web application and then uh, attacker could easily uh, be able to access those files if he's uh, if the attacker successfully exploits the lfi vulnerability basically all right and uh, so let me show you one thing here and uh, and uh, an LFI attack may generally lead to information disclosure, like I previously said. Um, attacker getting access to all these sensitive files or related to the web application, and in turn uh, benefiting him with uh, some financial benefit or any other uh, uh, malicious, maybe uh, with any sort of malicious intention, uh, he could be able to uh, successfully retrieve all these sensitive files in the form of information disclosure. Later on, using that uh, those sensitive information, he could um, go to the next level and run some uh, malicious scripts, okay, in the form of remote code execution, okay, or even uh, he could carry out cross-site scripting attacks. Attacks, all right and uh, performing SQL injections all right and all these things can happen um, if an attacker is successfully able to exploit the LFI vulnerability all right and typically LFI occurs when an application right uses the um, path to a file as input meaning uh, uh, there is generally a get um, input specified within the uh, code of the application okay here i have uh, created a sample uh, php code that's vulnerable to lfi vulnerability where you can see here there is a use of get input where uh, the get input uh, calls for a file that is locally available all right that could be uh, anything for example here in this url example.com all right this file is basically um, basically it is trying to call a file a file that is uh, known as file name.php this is residing locally within the uh, web server's uh, web document root directory okay so in this way in this example uh, vulnerable php code an attacker could make this following request and trick the web application in, into executing um, this particular harmful php script all right or uh, this php script could be locally available uh, within this uh, web applications web uh, web document root directory and uh, this particular php script both could be malicious or non malicious okay if it is a malicious script and then it could do harm to the web application or uh, that uh, that malicious script could in, in turn give more uh, sensitive information it could more expose the uh, sensitive information within the uh, within the web applications or uh, root directory path okay and also uh, at times he could run this uh, run genuine uh, scripts to get uh, to gain more information about the web application itself so there are uh, two possibilities here okay um, where uh, an attacker could uh, trick the web, web application in executing a php script okay and also he could uh, even upload a malicious uh, script within the same location all right so let me uh, quickly give another example how an attacker could upload a malicious script here so let's consider example.com as an example url i'm going to put in a question mark which is uh, generally which means uh, start of a query string or start of a parameter basically okay so if i want to talk about this uh, um, in this url basically this is the domain here okay basically a question mark denotes the start of a parameter or query string and then uh, here this file right this is generally the parameter name all right and uh, in this particular file name.php is nothing but the um, parameter value all right this is the parameter name and this is the parameter value over here okay and if there was and here it will be the separator all right and basically let me show you here what i'm going to talk what i'm referring here So see here guys so this is the um, this particular here is the i mean this particular here after the parameter uh, name okay this is the resource path basically right the resource path means the path of the resource okay meaning the uh, parameter value right evil.php where it is exactly located is uh, 
is specifying the uh, path of the resource all right this particular thing is the resource path and basically what i did here is this is the uh, this is called as directory traversal basically all right let me exactly show you okay what exactly a directory traversal is okay so directory traversal generally means moving forwards and uh, backwards uh, to get into uh, a, i mean a destination directory okay uh, in such a way that um, we uh, get into the desired directory to get uh, access to um, where an attacker could use this uh, method the directory traversal method to uh, get access to unauthorized uh, locations all right in the form of uh, etc etc directory okay within the etc directory he could fetch in more uh, sensitive files in the form of uh, past wd as well as shadow files all right and uh, so, so basically uh, we are trying to go f uh, one directory forward and two directory forward using this uh, switch over here all right i will explain you more in detail as i uh, move forward in this video Basically, I'm trying to see whether my recorder is. Basically, in this example here, um, the file uploaded, right? This evil.php. Um, this is currently being uploaded by the attacker. Okay, uh, where the application will include and execute this uh, script, and then uh, that would allow an attacker um, uh, steal more sensitive data after running this uh, PHP code. All right, it may expose more sensitive information uh, on the web server. Okay. And so this is the worst case scenario guys so an attacker does not always have the ability to upload any malicious file directly to the application even if they did there is no guarantee that the application uh, will save the file on the same server where uh, the lfi vulnerability exists even then the attacker would still need to know the uh, uh, disk path to the upload i mean to the uploaded file basically where this evil.php goes and resides or saves within the disk uh, an attacker should know that uh, should, should know that exact path okay <coughs> And again, like I said, um, even without the ability to upload and execute the code, um, a local file inclusion vulnerability can still be very dangerous, guys. Okay, so an attacker can still perform a directory traversal um, using um, the LFI vulnerability as I have showed you here. Okay, for example, let's say um, if um, the attacker, all right, if he needs to access uh, or if he wants to know the list of users uh, present within the web server, what he'll be doing is, okay, so firstly, let me explain you what exactly uh, the uh, directory traversal is in a more detailed sense. All right, so here, you minimize okay so here i have created this uh, file structure okay when it comes to uh, linux based operating systems this particular thing here is your root directory all right and uh, so let's say um when it comes to web root or uh, i mean web document root directory uh, within a web server basically it will be the var www html these are the three uh, three conventional things here okay like i showed you in my Kali linux uh, virtual machine How the directory looks like by default all the files within a web server will get saved within this html folder or html directory present within var and then www okay but however when it comes to your uh, normal linux based operating system by default you will be a root directory all right and when it comes to web application so basically if i just want to clear this up if i go to so basically if i want to move one directory backwards or this is called as backtracking okay i would be putting cd space dot dot all right so this is called as the directory traversal guys all right basically moving backwards or forwards okay by using the switch dot dot forward slash basically this you are doing within the operating system itself but however when it comes to url you will be specifying dot dot back uh, forward slash basically it's uh, it's like you are moving one step backwards from the uh, directory you you would be within the url all right so this applies only for the url guys dot dot forward slash all right so that is called as directory traversal for example um let's say let's say uh, the developer has created a folder dvwa all right so basically if i do a normal um, search google search to see more what are the most common parameters to test lfa vulnerability on a web application or website or web url is all these things okay cat question mark cat is equal to question mark dir is equal to question mark action is equal to and even question mark file is equal to is um, a parameter that you can use for uh, um, searching if the web application is susceptible to lfi vulnerability or not so here uh, i have showed you uh, file is equal to as an example to uh, detect lfi vulnerability okay on my document here that i have created so i'll be using the same parameter okay so this file is the parameter name all right and uh, like i was telling let's say here this particular file we know that it is present within let's say uh, the developer the uh, web application developer has created another folder within the uh, html uh, directory okay in the, in the name of dvwa all right this we know that the file uh, this file uh, i mean this file path is this or this parameter name 
is currently residing within this dbwa folder all right but however now if the attacker wants to get into the etc directory to view this past wd file or shadow file he needs to go backwards all right and obviously uh, as an attacker who is not um, the exact web developer he would not know where exactly he's currently on the uh, on the search basically all right so what he needs to do is he needs to keep specifying the parameters let's imagine if the web developer has created the dbwa folder and within that um, this file is residing as in let's say i'm just going to specify here guys so guys here let's say uh, if the attacker wants to get inside the etc pass wd uh, directory okay firstly he needs to get into that root uh, root uh, root directory okay so here like i have showed you here let's assume the developer has created dbwa folder but firstly to access the pass wd and shadow file he needs to get into this root directory first and then he needs to go to etc folder once he successfully gets into the etc folder he should uh, it will be one step away for him to view the pass wd uh, and uh, uh, shadow files all right so for that he need he would be doing this applying this technique called uh, directory traversal all right so let me open my word document okay so here i have specified this entire path guys where this file um, parameter name as in we specifying file as in the parameter name uh, assuming that this file uh, directory is present within the DW, uh, dwwa and within the uh, var or uh, sorry var forward slash www forward slash html which is your uh, web document root directory all right within the web server so for uh, firstly what the attacker needs to do here is the attack or the attacker will do basically is he will try to firstly he needs to uh, here is the root directory basically guys all right here before the var he would need to get into the root directory and then he, he would be able to get into the etc directory all right and then here he should be he, sh he shall be able to reach out to the um it uh past wd file all right so firstly what he needs to do is let me delete this here all right here what i'm going to do is i'm just going to put etc forward slash pass wd all right and firstly he, let's imagine he is in this file directory here. Firstly, what he needs to do is he, need to, he needs to go backwards, backtracking to D, DWA uh, folder, and then again he has to then backtrack and go to HTML folder, and then again he has to go to uh, he has to do the backtracking and go to uh, WWW folder, and then again he then then he needs to reach out to var, and then finally he will go to root, and then he will finally reach out to etc password. For that, what he needs to do from here is. For here, firstly, he needs to do forward slash forward slash, uh, sorry, dot dot forward slash, and then he has gone to dbwa, then another one he needs to do, and then he will jump into HTML, and then another one he will reach out to uh, www, and then another one, another one traversal he will reach out to var, and then finally, automatically he will reach out to root, and then he shall be able to access the etc directory, and within once he reaches out to etc directory, he will be able to access or retrieve the past wd file, which is the uh, most sensitive file that contains a list of users. Or even he can uh, once he reaches etc directory, he can also view the shadow file, which is nothing but the hash passwords file, okay, which is present within the shadow file. All right, and then he could use other tools to uh, decrypt the hash passwords. All right, and that's how he will be able to even, uh, uh, I mean exploit or even he could get access to the web server itself using these sensitive information that present i mean that contains the credentials in the form of usernames and passwords all right so this is the example of what exactly directory traversal is and how it is used on a url to find lfi vulnerabilities or to exploit lfi vulnerabilities all right so this is what i wanted to show basically by giving you a live example so guys, this etc shadow file is a local file okay, that will be present in all the web servers, particularly that is based out of a Linux based operating system, like in case of Apache server, or even it could be a server in the form of a Linux based operating system, all right, which will by default contain all these uh, local files. Okay, etc shadow or etc passwd is a local file that will be present in every web server uh, that is based out of a Linux operating system, all right, and of course, so using these parameters or getting access uh, to these files means LFI is present, all right. Which means the, the website or the web application is susceptible to LFI vulnerability. All right, and also these kinds of attacks may also leverage. Uh, I mean, so firstly I was talking about the LFI vulnerability and how an attacker uses this technique. Okay, which is the directory traversal. That is also an attack to uh, uses two two techniques here. One is uh, exploiting a vulnerability and then using a technique uh, or a, or attack method called as uh, directory traversal, which is again which is also a vulnerability in itself. Okay, and the same vulnerability, directory traversal vulnerability could uh, lead to more information disclosure as, as in uh, will actually lead to exposure of more sensitive files like let's say log files okay uh, for example apache access logs in the form of access.log or error.log or even uh, the attacker could uh, get in uh, to uh, accessing source codes of the uh, web application and any sort of other sensitive information okay this information may then be used to advance an attack basically right so that is the uh, 
uh, i mean uh, that is the nefarious um, outcome of exploiting lfi vulnerability basically so that's why it's important to um, sanitize the program's code okay and ensure like the, the web application developers should ensure uh, they do not use all these get inputs particularly and call local files that is how this vulnerability could be avoided guys sanitizing the uh, get input basically right this get input that includes the local file or calls the local file should be avoided in the in the web application code basically databases could be used okay uh, which is more secure okay and if there is a need to call a file basically uh, the developers should use make use of the databases okay to call any sort of local files right so that's how lfi vulnerabilities could be avoided and there are a lot of other ways also like how uh, um, the developers could avoid um, lfi vulnerabilities within the uh, web application or website's code okay also uh, the uh, also they could use whitelist whitelisted file names or locations all right and also and also ensure um, the developers do not use any sort of um, file upload functions okay so these file upload functions could be used by attackers later to upload any sort of malicious codes okay to uh, advance any sort of attacks okay so these this is how um, lfi vulnerability could be avoided guys like since i'm not a web developer i could not show you those in more live sense okay so the intention of this video was to uh, give you a brief idea about what exactly the lfa vulnerability is and how it is exploited by attackers and how web developers could be uh, uh, could be cautious before uh, they actually uh, develop the application and uh, send send to the production all right so all these sanity checks could be carried out and if you found this video helpful guys please hit the important button to subscribe my channel for more useful technical content like this with regard uh, with regards to cyber security uh, we'll be in the next video then stay safe really cheers tada Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Happy Saturday, everyone. So this video, I'm going to talk about how to find LFI vulnerability on a web application or website using Burp Suite application. All right. So let's quickly get started, guys. Yesterday, I made a video uh, that was a more of a theoretical explanation about what exactly uh, is uh, LFI vulnerability, as in local file inclusion, as well as I also mentioned. Uh, uh, remediation steps that could be implemented to avoid lfi vulnerability as in the local file inclusion vulnerability but however in this video i'm going to give you a practical demonstration of how to exactly find lfi vulnerability on a website or web application uh, using burp suite software so let's quickly get started guys all i'm going to do now is i'm going to launch my burp suite application on my virtual machine um, that is uh, i have uh, hosted my burp suite software on uh, a windows and virtual machine so let, let me get uh, get started first I'm going to quickly launch my uh, Windows 10 virtual machine for you and uh, after Windows 10 virtual machine gets started I will launch the Burp Suite software and uh, use a test website all right and that is uh, intentionally a susceptible website to a uh, majority of uh, um, majority of web related vulnerabilities okay so that is particularly for educational learning purposes <laughs> So I've launched my Burp Suite application. So we're quickly going to enable my embedded browser. I normally use embedded browser for uh, ease of access. I have enabled my embedded browser. I'm just going to quickly go to proxy tab and open my embedded browser. I can use this uh, this option over here. So yeah, so. The browser is open for me and uh, I'm going to use a website called testphp.worldweb.com right so I'm just going to give a very simple example guys I'm not going to go about uh, using uh, PHP wrappers okay somehow PHP wrappers isn't working on this uh, web application anymore previously it used to work but uh, PHP wrappers isn't working anymore so I'm just going to use a very simple example and I will uh, corroborate uh, this particular web application or website is indeed um, susceptible to LFI vulnerability or not okay so that one particular example will be able to, uh, to ensure that uh, you, you would be able to successfully val uh, validate whether a website or web application is vulnerable to LFI or not okay um, so PHP if I would just want to uh, give you a quick uh, overview of what exactly PHP wrappers are so generally LFI vulnerabilities usually give attackers a read only access to sensitive data okay granted from the web server there are uh, however ways to turn this read only access into a fully compromised uh, host this type of attack is called as remote code execution which I've already explained in the previous video and uh, how attackers usually upload uh, malicious uh, scripts to uh, probably uh, run uh, remote scripts okay and then uh, gain further access or advanced um, attacks okay and also attack uh, attackers right can create rc vulnerabilities combining uh, 
with PHP wrappers. Okay, wrapper is generally an entity that surrounds another entity. In this case, a malicious code, and the wrapper can contain functionality added to the original code. Okay, and uh, PHP uses right uh, this these built-in wrappers, which are implemented alongside uh, your uh, file system functions. And then attackers can use this native functionality of PHP wrappers to add uh, vulnerabilities into uh, into it. Okay. And so generally there are two commonly used wrappers one is php filter and another one is php zip php wrappers sorry the php filter which i'm uh, which i wanted to uh, show to you it provides access to a local file system and also attackers use this filter to read any sort of uh, php files that contains source code of the web, of web application uh, typically for the purpose of identifying uh, the sensitive information including uh, database credentials as well as uh, any sort of uh, login credentials all right and uh, so uh, I would not like to waste more time on giving you theoretical explanation, but just quickly move into a practical demonstration. So here, uh, this is the web application, guys. All I'm going to do is firstly intercept this, all right? And then I'm going to quickly do a refresh, all right? And the page has uh, been intercepted here. And then firstly, what I would need to do is I will firstly right click this and do a scan here, okay? And then uh, I will uh, just go ahead and click on crawl and audit. All right, and uh, the next thing is scan configuration. I will just uh, select and I will just select, I mean, a fast scan. All right, and I will click OK. There you go, guys. The scan will be uh, kick started already here. If you see here, you will see the progress on the dashboard uh, tab or dashboard view. All right, and then what I'm going to quickly do now is just go to tra target. All right, and I will firstly make sure this is added to my scope here. Right? How do I do that? I'll just right click the target and just say add to scope. And then here under scope, you will see this. Uh, this is my destination uh, web, web URL or web application. Okay. Here you will see the the scan. Right. Previously it was called as uh, spider. Now it is being called as crawl and audit. So this uh, crawl and audit scan has already begun the scanning, and you can see the sitemap available over here. Okay. You can see the index.php file, login.php file. So it's giving more of uh, these details to me. So I'm actually waiting for the scan to complete, guys, so that I will be able to um, find if the website, if this particular website is indeed vulnerable to LFI or not, all right? Whilst I'm uh, waiting for the scan to complete, guys, I would like to add another filter over here under target tab by just clicking on this area and uh, just clicking on this checkbox, show only in scope items. And I will just click apply. <laughs> so, guys, so whilst I'm waiting for the scan to complete, here you can see there is a params uh, column. I'm just going to double click and see if there are any params uh, parameters that is available in this website under get method particularly, all right? So here you can see there are a lot of parameters already getting listed over here. There is a tick mark, right? Which means there are parameters uh, that uh, this website is having included, okay? Which means there is a possibility of LFI vulnerability here, all right? So that's what we this scan is finding automatically for you. However, there is a requirement of us manually doing some uh, uh, delving as well, right? You see here there are l almost 10 to 15 parameters that is uh, that is that has been crawled and audited by the uh, crawl and audit uh, feature under scanning of burp suite. So we'll still wait for the complete scanning to complete. So if you aren't uh, willing to wait for such a long time, so all you can do is you can click on uh, burp right here and then use the search facility available. Just going to quickly select in scope only and then i will uh, uncheck response header and response body all right and i'm going to quickly search one thing here file is equal to okay i'm going to use the file parameter name okay and i will look for a, a parameter value all right apologies guys for the interruption so I'm just going to quickly do another search here okay i'm going to select in scope and check these two options and i'm just going to quickly search for file is equal to Okay, and then we're going to quickly do a go. Then here, the very first option, right? I'm just going to right click. I think you can see a picture is getting embedded uh, to this particular web application. So let's quickly go ahead and uh, send this traffic to repeater. And then I'm just going to quickly go to repeater. And if you see here, guys, I'm just going to quickly, you can see this. There is a parameter here called file, and there is a parameter value, as in uh, uh, the resource that is getting added 
uh, within the uh, test PHP uh, web application, all right, which is nothing but it's getting included with a local file that contains the picture. All right, so I'm quickly going to send and see the response. You can see here there is a 200 OK response. And if I see the render, you can see this is the picture, which means this picture is available locally uh, within this web app, sorry, web URL or uh, websites web server. OK, and this is how you do it, guys. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly uh, do some manipulation to this uh, get URL. All right, and then I'm just going to see if uh, this uh, particular web application is indeed vulnerable to LFI or not. Okay, how am I going to do this, guys? I'm just going to quickly remove this file here. Okay, and what I'm going to do now is let's just do a etc uh, forward slash pass wd and see if um, we are getting any response or not. If I just send it, go to I'll just go to raw. You can see here, you can see the etc pass wd is not within the allowed path, which means the resource path we have specified isn't matching. So, yesterday I talked about uh, doing a, a directory traversal. Let's quickly do that, guys. Just go. Let's try going a uh, one directory backwards and see if we are able to um, dot dot forward slash. Sorry, first we'll do dot dot. Still no. We'll do one more. We'll go one more uh, directory backwards, and as you can see here, guys, the etc password file has been successfully retrieved, and you can see here all these are list of users. Um, that is. Uh, those are logging in to the web server where this uh, application is hosted on, right? You can see there are root daemon, uh, there are um, nobody, there, there's a username with nobody, and then there are a lot of other users as well. And uh, we can actually see shadow file as well, which is in the same directory. Hopefully, we should be able to read the shadow file as well. So basically, there is no shadow file here, guys, okay, within this etc directory. There is only pass wd file. And then let's do one thing here. We'll do, we'll see for proc version. Let's see if we're able to get anything. Yeah, there is there is no such file or directory, guys, in the uh, in the form of proc or version. So again, only thing we found was the etc pass wd file here. All right, so that's the sensitive information that we were able to successfully exploit and get, which means, uh, which means obviously even you can see here there is a mysql user as well okay so which means there is actually this proves that this website is indeed vulnerable to uh, lfi vulnerability local file inclusion like we were able to add this uh, parameter here and successfully get the uh, file by adding this uh, by using this get input basically okay basically we are calling a local file and we we are able to successfully read the local file okay however we don't have permissions to modify this file but however we are able to read this file okay however like in case if you want to view the source code like i was previously talking about something called php wrappers that is that allows to elevate the read only access to uh, full access okay so let me show you what exactly php wrappers is how to use it okay on a web application so if you want to view the source code of this show image.php file okay so we would be using we'd be requiring to use a php filter guys or php wrapper all right so let me quickly use that uh, php wrapper okay so it is nothing but putting php colon forward slash forward slash filter forward slash resource is equal to show image dot php so i'm just going to quickly hit send button However, you can see here, I'm not getting any response in a positive manner. So ideally, I should be receiving the source code of this show image.php uh, page, all right? However, I'm not getting the source code, which means there is something wrong. Um, I mean, something that has changed within this uh, web application or the way Burp Suite works, all right? So if there is any erudite professional, cybersecurity professional who's watching this video, please let me know if you ha if you guys have a fix for this, okay? And uh, so this is the example of how to use the PHP filter guys to elevate your read-only access. All right, and uh, even uh, you can use. Jay, kya ji, kya kar lagi? So basically, there are more uh, PHP filters that can be used to perform different tasks, but however, it's of no use because uh, a basic uh, PHP wrapper functionality itself isn't working for me. Okay, and uh, if you found this video helpful thus far, please hit the upload button. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more useful uh, technical content like this with regards to cybersecurity. We'll meet in the next video, guys. Until then, stay safe, eat healthy, cheers, startup, bye bye.